What's up, everyone? Zombies here again, and we are back with episode two of the Fighting Pit podcast. With my co-hosts here, here, Tankster and Mullahu. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Glad yeah, to I'm hear. doing fabulous. I'm excited. Yeah, so uh, we got some fun stuff to talk about this week. Um, <laughs> kind of the first bit of discussion I thought we'd do is something kind of community related. So uh, if you've been on Twitter at all the past week and following kind of, you know, the card reveal stuff uh, that's been going on um, recently, I think they actually just put it out today, was we had um, a card reveal given to um, some of our arena streamers here in the community. And that was awesome. And there was some discourse about that in terms of getting uh, more reveals and stuff to other members of the community. And it sounded like there is some potential there for uh mercenaries and maybe like battleground stuff to get a little bit more publicity in the the pre-release pre-release season which we're in now kind of leading up to the the hype for the expansion since usually they kind of give each mode at least a little bit of something uh when patch day comes so i thought that was really exciting uh did you guys hear about that yeah we got a uh, we had some some kind people on twitter tag uh honestly a lot of us um here in a lot of the mercenary stuff which is really cool that miss lake the new uh community manager community outreach manager uh was kind of has been floating around twitter a lot uh, as one would expect and yeah they were kind of asking is there anybody i think raran actually kind of prompted the conversation by saying like hey i don't know if there are mercenary reveals but can i get one and then like a little conversation kind of spun from that and the some names were announced or not announced but some names were kind of uh gifted up to some blizzard folk in terms of hey maybe these people should get a reveal maybe these people should get a reveal maybe a new uh mercenaries podcast should get a reveal who knows <laughs> but uh no definitely exciting i mean people have always been kind of uh, embattled about whether or not like how to do stream or how to do the uh, like spoiler season, whether or not it's better to just slow, like hide everything until the last day. People kind of always get in some spats about if too much is revealed too early, then the meta starts to kind of get like pre-solved, which as mercenaries people, I'm not sure we're ever allowed to talk about a pre-solving of a meta or ever complaining about it ever again. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, I mean, in, in the end, I think giving more, give, give them to the people, right? I think I'm on more or less on that side. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Anytime you're bringing in community uh, figures, whether they're, you know, these these big folks like you, you we saw Dallas tagged in there. You mm-hmm. saw obviously Raren started uh, the conversation uh, all the way down to, you know, some of the little guys, the the new folks. I think anytime you encourage um, new content creators to come and, and try their hand, uh, it's only good for the game. It's only good for the community. Um yeah, and and whether we do that for reveal season or in another way, I'm not sure. I've loved the reveal season so far. There's just mm-hmm. so much hype, and I love theory crafting. Um, you know, the only it, Blizzard has tried it a couple of different ways. The only thing I can say is I do like having at least a full week in between final reveal and release, mm-hmm. so I can get my theory crafting done. Yeah. And, you know, as a uh, absolute corporate shill for uh, Vicious Syndicate, uh, I know that that takes the pressure off them and the folks uh, in the standard community that are trying to write these sort of uh, pre-release uh, analysis. Oh, for sure. Uh, definitely. Like, uh, even though I don't, like, keep up with standard a whole ton, I still read the, the Vicious Syndicate reports, like, almost every week. <laughs> just because it's yeah. such, like, I've just always loved reading them and you can really tell like a lot of effort and quality goes into that kind of analysis and that takes time. So it is nice ha- giving them a little bit of heads up to like kind of work on that and put that out before, you know, uh, where if it drops like a day or two before the expansion, you know, then the expansion comes out and all that stuff is like irrelevant in like two days. Cause everything changes. Right. So exactly. it's, it's constantly in a state of flux and flow and, I'm definitely looking forward to to seeing that when we're only like two weeks out now, right? About two weeks. Yeah, we're getting close. Mm -hmm. December 7th, I think. Yeah. And uh, to get ahead of of this inevitable question, right? uh, I have confirmed through various back channels. Zacho has no uh, interest or capability to do a mercenaries meta report. uh, (laughs) Nor does anyone on the vicious syndicate team so it looks like it's up to us fellas yeah Uh, Yeah. how much data did you guys bring was it was it like a couple hundred thousand games (laughs) because i think that's what they usually do so did did we all bring that tonight 
Oh, I have mine. <laughs> I got um, like a forty oh, ish. So you know, close That's enough, close, right? Right? Close enough. Yeah, it's almost yeah. almost a couple hundred thousand, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's true, um, and that's one thing I think, uh, or I kind of hope we end up seeing um, down the line is I'm sure there will be more like kind of like we have now different stats tracking websites that kind of give a uh, more general overview of the meta because I think that's one thing we are lacking a little bit right now in mercenaries. Because the meta can be pretty different, you know, between whether you're in, you know, you're just breaking out of the the bot ranks in like 6,000, 6,500, or if you're in the 7K ranges and, you know, getting more accustomed to other players and stuff, the meta can be super different. Or if you're like at the top or in like top 200 or top 100 or whatever it is, it, it can really vary a lot. So I think that's one thing. It'd be really interesting to see the data on like what people are playing at that lower rank because you do get that trickle down effect where, you know, a deck becomes popular and, you know, everybody uses it and yada, yada, yada. But at the same time, I, I still think you see a lot more variety and trying of new things because a lot of these players don't really know what is like the most established, kind of like with how we've seen like in Quest Mage in like standard and stuff where it's known it's not the T1 like top tier deck, but people just love playing it, especially at the lower <laughs> ranks. So it's like it still makes up a huge portion of the meta, even though it's not some oppressive beats everything kind of deck. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, mer yeah, mer mercenaries are just super weird in terms of getting a hold of stats, getting hold of again anything reliable, honestly, like. This is, again, something I've said before, and I'll continue to say it, that Mercenaries is just full. There are so many numbers everywhere, and whether or not you can trust one number versus another is almost impossible in many, many cases, right? Especially, like you said, from the difference between was this played at 6K, was this played at 8K, was it played at 11K, right? All of those make a huge difference, and especially when Mercenaries is as skill-intensive as it is. Pure data is tough to do. Again, do you do something again? Like I kind of keep referring people to Firestone. I think Hearthstone Top Decks is maybe starting to do some more stuff too. I know that there's there are people working on it, right? But how do you get a system in place that can reliably actually convey meaningful information is gonna is is a really tough. That's a, that's a tough question. Mm -hmm. It's not like standard. I think it's probably way easier for things like standard or even like arena or duels or anything like that. I think mercenaries has a lot of very odd problems up in its court that we've seen kind of play itself out over the last month or so. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, don't even get started on the, okay, well, you're running a Shadow Sam with a Karen Diablo cookie in the back. Well, what happens if, you know, you see your opponent come and you get the hard read on them and you decide that I'm going to leave lead with Karen Diablo? Like, mm -hmm. is that the same comp? Because yeah. we've talked a little bit about already how much those leads change what it is you're running, right? If you lead your back three before your front three, you may as well be running something completely different. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good that's a good kind of question challenge pose there because you know one thing um, we definitely have seen is especially when you get on the the higher end of the ranking system you do run into mirror matches um, mm -hmm. and when you kind of know what your opponent's bringing it's almost like tournament environment where you can kind of like try and tech against it rather than say oh I just want to lead with my best opener that way I have the best chance versus whatever it is. Well, I might know they kind of counter my best opener a bit, so maybe I want to throw in one or two or even maybe my whole bench just to kind of throw them off and give myself a better chance. And it's like, do you count that as a different lineup? <laughs> or like, how do you... Like... There are a lot of questions and challenges there, um, but I definitely have heard some uh, rumors going around about some projects going on for that. So we'll definitely have to yeah. keep our eyes out for that because I do think that's going to be a great thing to see because like right now... Like, I wouldn't know what to, like, recommend someone who's maybe just breaking into those PvP ranks because, like, what they're seeing is probably totally different than what we've been seeing from, like, playing since day one. Um, yeah, at least, and, like, and you can kind of different. And you can call it jank. You can call <laughs> it, you know, run what you got. You call it whatever you want. But you do see at the lower ranks, especially near that 6K rank floor, uh, some really spicy stuff in the same way that if you're at a rank floor in standard you know diamond five is where i always see 
the most ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is both infuriating sometimes as you're climbing through uh, and really interesting because you're like, uh, and especially in mercenaries, we talked about this last week, these interactions I've never thought of. That's where I get most of my ideas, right? Is in that 6K ranking because <laughs> it's the, the farther you get above that, the less willing people are to try new things because suddenly your rank is something to be protected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so just kind of referring to the ladder experience in general, it is super duper weird and I think can seem as if spooky to new players potentially. But I, all that I keep thinking about whenever I face, uh, like Zombies was saying, like facing either mirror matches or you just play against the same person back to back to back games. I mean, at, I'm, I'm at like 8.2K or something like that. And the regular, like this morning, I played against Leandro like four times in a row, right? It was really weird. But Every time I start that sentence, I love to finish it with the fact that like I am regularly amazed by how glad I am to get Runzi's backsies against people on ladder. Like that was never a thing in standard, I think. Yeah. I never, ever, ever in playing how many literally thousands of games of standard do I play against the same person? First of all, it just doesn't happen. But right. if it did happen, I don't even think that it would feel good. I sometimes it's happened like extremely, extremely rarely, but it, even just playing against the same matchup twice doesn't feel good or as good in standard as it does in mercenaries i am regularly impressed by how much of a learning experience how fun and how interesting and how much of an edge you can actually kind of put yourself to the test and how much can you get from that by playing as the same person again it's, it has been really sweet and like zombie said kind of replicates some conquests kind of replicates some tournament settings which is cool mm -hmm. um the tournament scene has kind of been quiet since the invitational but uh I guess my, my point is just I love how Mercenaries has this secret quality about it where playing against people in back to back times on ladder is actually sweet. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, I think the tournament scene has quieted down a little bit this week. You know, the in the US, we've got Thanksgiving coming up, um, but I also haven't seen a lot of signups for early December um, tournaments just yet, which, yeah, I've, I've been a little disappointed in. So uh I, I floated this idea on Twitter uh, after last week's episode, and it got some pretty positive reception. So it, there, you listeners, you may want to look out for a, a Fighting Pit mm -hmm. uh, podcast uh, listeners series sign up. Uh, we're thinking something a little different, something uh, that probably won't be considered a competitive mode, but is going to be fun, interesting, and strategic in its own way. Uh, for those of you who have played Magic the Gathering, think of Popper and the what the Mercenaries version of that would look like. And uh, I'll just leave that tease uh, for this week. Yeah, that, that sounds really fun. And for anyone, any non-Magic uh, people out there, Popper is basically a format using only common cards. So to think like a Mercenary is kind of equivalent of that would be maybe only using Rare Mercs or something along those lines. So definitely more kind of budget friendly and it's really interesting because like with any format you know those restrictions really change what uh can kind of be done and what's really effective because you don't have diablo carrot running around you know that's not even yeah. something you can consider and so all of a sudden some of those are mercenaries looking a lot better than they are in maybe the current metagame but uh speaking of current metagame um why don't we talk a little bit about what we've been playing this week and what we have been running into um you want to who wants to start us off here i'll kick it off sounds good i uh so i i did not get as many games in this week as i was hoping um and so i i had to split time uh between uh brewing mm -hmm. something new and um climbing uh, I after last uh, two weeks ago the debacle with dragons on stream mm -hmm. um I uh, I was at like 6.2 or something. So I basically got all the way back to rank floor. I spent most of the week with uh, Nature Sam, uh, grinding my way back up, all the way up to um, 8K. And I think nice. if you had nice. refreshed in a 15-minute window, <laughs> you might have very briefly seen me reappear on the leaderboard for the third time this month. <laughs> and oh, yeah. nice. then all the way back down to 7.3. Um, with Nature but, Sparrow? With Nature Samuro all the way around. Um, I have been trying really hard to figure out how to make these mirrors better. 
talk about that a little bit later maybe but i've also been messing with the bench because there's there's nothing more boring than grinding karen diablo on your bench and the opponent's bench for like hours a day uh so i've tried what i've really been liking actually is um sylvanas fulgin in the back um with all of the usual sylvanas death rattle and fun stuff like that uh and then fulgin actually uh boosts her right all her abilities are shadow so you get the vulgin speed boost and he's obviously just a great sweeper and unfortunately cookie is just kind of mandatory for that comp right now otherwise you auto lose mirrors um Mm. but the only other thing of interest i've been trying was a uh, i'm calling it shadow nature samuro um because i tried to take the best pieces of both and smash them together so it is just a shadow sam lead with um uh what did I put in the back? Is Malf, uh, Cookie, uh, Karen in the back? It it felt pretty good mm. actually. Um, there are some weaknesses. Uh, I definitely don't know the lines as well. Um, but uh, it it felt a lot better than I was expecting. So there might be something here. I don't know. What about you, Bolahu? What did okay. you? Uh, what were you playing with this week? Um. Well, I mean, hearing Vulgin on the bench, honestly, that's. The one, the only downside to Cookie in my mind is the fact that Vol'jin got taken out of these benches. I That was probably one of the mercs that I could not stop talking about. If you read the guides that I wrote and stuff, I just constantly keep referring to Vol'jin as like a critical kind of like game piece in the meta right now. But um, so I wish that I was playing Vol'jin on the bench. But no, honestly, the last since we've last met, uh, I didn't play a ton over the weekend. I played a little bit these last couple of days, mostly with Ma'am, right, with the uh, mm-hmm. uh, Mukla and doing mouth or mouth into a mukla comp uh, again from like the invitational the deck that honestly I, i've probably had the most fun with i had a really nutty record with it basically only losing to nature samuro specifically so i'm on the other side of the spectrum yeah where i went like this is a little bit before people were still getting their eudoras ready so like none of the pirate stuff was out but kind of in the post cookie also when not everyone had cookie ready to go too so i was yep. maybe slightly advantaged there but i went like 18 10 and 2 with ma'am and with seven losses to nature samuro so wow. if you take away nature samuro i just went 18 and 3 so it was really really sick but obviously this is something we're going to talk about later in the show too yep. uh is what happens when you try to play a deck that has a great matchup against the field except for one part of the field and that one part of the field is 80 percent of the field <laughs> it gets very very different it gets very very tough but you have to hope that things like MAM in the future will get better when the matchups kind of get less um, just homogenous, right? I mean, right now it's just a ton of right. Samuro stuff, right? They, there's just a million Samuros. And MAM is still fine, but Nature Samuro is basically unwinnable. I would say in all the games that I've played, MAM into Nature Samuro feels like an actually not winnable unless you switch up the opener, right? Unless you can know that they're playing Nature Samuro and then you do some weird stuff. But no, otherwise, mostly... uh. Ma'am, and then I messed around with trying to fit Guff into things again. Maybe learned that straight nature is okay again, right? Like going back to Brucon, Guff. Oh, yes. Um, Malfurion could be a move that that was kind of what I was playing a lot of again at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. First couple of weeks, that was a lot more common than people kind of started figuring everything out. And then Smuro came in and nature Smuro kind of took the place instead of regular nature. But I think mm-hmm. regular OG nature might be fine. And Guff on the bench really wasn't that good. Cookie is basically a better Guff on the bench and a better Vol'jin. So Cookie really did a lot, but no, mostly Ma'am yeah. and messing around with nature. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so I've been I've been kind of just jamming that uh, list I mentioned last week that I found from Dallas. Mm. The so it's uh, running Illidan. What's it? Illidan's on the back bench though, which is kind of a, a different change. Um, but we start with Eudora, Varden, and Tyrion. So it's actually like a four fighter comp. Um, Holy moly! Yeah, <laughs> and I call I call it the the green machine. I just put out a, a video on it the, uh, the other day, and nice. it is it's really cool. Um, we've been seeing kind of a lot more Eudora experimentation um, in a few different comps, and I definitely see why. You know, we talked about last week how she's a really cool mercenary, a lot of potential, and I think she does really well in this comp. Um, and then Tyrion. Kind of one of the things I've been liking most about Tyrion is on his own, he doesn't seem like, especially as a lead, you wouldn't really think to lead him because all you have is his kind of default attack, which isn't the most impactful thing in the world, especially on turn one when you're not, you know, you're not getting a death blow with it um, to get that divine shield. 
but his other abilities are really strong, especially with we're seeing so much Samuro running around. It's really kind of big being able to kind of shrink their Samuro on turn two, and then if they think they're free to attack, they actually end up taking a lot more damage onto themselves, um, which has happened more than a few times. Um, people just, I just don't think they really know how to play around Tyrion yet, because he's kind of right. so new. And then I was rocking his equipment that gives uh, your plus eight, plus eight. When he dies, he gives that to, I believe it's both your mercenaries on the field and the bench. Um, and that's really huge because the back bench is Karen, Diablo, and Illidan. And when Illidan comes in, he, he can be like, I think quite a few times he came in at, I think he comes in at 21 attack um, if he's maxed with the buff. And oh. that's scary. Like, yeah, <laughs> um, especially if multiple of your units died and you're getting a Karen down uh, two, because then you can go Karen to speed up, get your Diablo fire stomp combo off and then hit them all for three or hit each of their mercenaries with 21 damage from his like big AOE attack. And it's just like, that's a lot of damage uh, just to come out of nowhere. And I've just really been wanting to find a place for Illidan. And that definitely feels like, a solid home it's been doing well against the big thing it's been doing well against is shadow samuro i've been seeing a whole lot of shadow samuro and i'm not saying it's a heavily favored matchup or anything like the games are close don't get me wrong because shadow samuro is a really strong comp um but it is definitely winnable um and i think the the big thing and i think we're going to see this in a lot of Eudora comps is it's really hard to play her 100 percent optimally like mm. I have so much fun playing this comp, but I have to like physically stop myself after like four or five games because my head hurts because <laughs> the, the cannon positioning oh, yeah. is just so tough and it matters so much of the time. Like I screwed up positioning one game and that was the difference between, I think, killing a Malfurion on turn one or turn two and not. And that's just like totally changes the swing of the game. So it, it there's really a lot to learn there. And luckily it's, it's relatively even it's confusing as it is it's relatively easier with just her rather than before you know when people were trying pirates with edwin you had to jumble managing the adjacent speed boosts and the cannons and um i think we are going to see some attempts at that again if we do get some more pirates i think it's a really like strong potential there and i'm still an advocate for uh buffing edwin i, I think it at the very least if you don't want to make it like Vol'jin's where it buffs all your pirates, just make it your other pirates and get rid of the adjacent part because it just makes Eudora so, so awkward with moving the cannon around to get that hit in the first turn. Um, but And we do already have like that precedent, precedent, precedence there with, uh, with Vol'jin um, and his passive ability being kind of similar. So that's really what I've been jamming a lot of. It's a really fun comp. And then I've been trying to jam a little bit of... I'm trying to make mutanus work um mm -hmm. i really think that that ability that makes him take less damage and not take crit damage when he taunts up is really really huge um it really does kind of samaro can't really beat through that very quickly and even if they do have another um another protector like mal for somebody out it's they really can't just do much like they, he just takes so little damage and then maybe pairing that with like uh anduin and velen so you're just kind of getting those holy AoEs off, healing him up. Um, the only thing that's kind of weak too is definitely uh, slowdown potential um, can mess that up. But it's it's felt pretty strong. I know a lot of people have been trying uh, like Cornelius and that kind of comp um, and seeing it go pretty decently um, to an extent. So I think it'd be neat to kind of try Mutanus there as well. But those are the yeah. main things I've been doing this week. I actually bailed off my my Mutanus testing that I was talking about last week because of the rise of Cornelius, because yeah. what he wants more than anything is to swing into fighters. Like, if you can give them some breathing room, and when I'm running uh, Mutanus, I feel like I am, right? It's mm -hmm. not typically a high damage uh, lead mm -hmm. out there. Um, not, not to the extent of, like, a, a Nature Sam, uh, but yeah cornelius just he taunts every other turn and then he swings and just takes the the plus five health uh you know uh, on the opposite turn and it it just yeah about 10 games of uh cornelius and doing velen and i kind of threw my hands up in the air and said i'm gonna wait for a meta shift before i figure this one out <laughs> yeah mutinous uh the couple of times that i've run into mutinous he's been fine i honestly don't think that i've 
again in that same kind of way he's just like just barely not really good enough because mm -hmm. the other murlocs like aren't really that sick either i mean old merc guy is still nutty i still think that guy is nice and i continue to suggest i don't know why people stop playing triple murloc i don't know why people stop playing morgul in the opener like just do the normal thing and i think it's still just fine it's kind of a classic i mean murlocs in general right are just gonna get bm'd because they're murlocs like mm -hmm. they're just not mm -hmm. gonna be respected straight up yeah. just like yeah. a lot of those types of classes and a lot of types of video games are like the diminutive little like nerdy little things that no one likes even if they're viable competitively like people just won't play in them because of the stigma and yeah. i have run into some murloc gaming but i think there's still more space in the uh in the Murloc gaming world. Maybe we'll get another Murloc in the new set. Um, but I mean, we already got like four or five right now. So don't tease me with Not a good bad. time. <laughs> <laughs> Protector Murloc when I don't know who Got it would him. have to be, but that'd be cool. I don't know. Maybe the uh, the Battlegrounds guy. What's his name? Um, uh, I... The good one, like big five mana. Oh, the oh uh, yeah. That's um, a maybe he's maybe he's a nope. protector. I don't it's know. It's gone. Yeah. I... Giant Finn. No. It's summon guy. Yeah, that's anyway. Right. We, the point is he exists. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh Pig Burgle Gurgle. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. That could be a protector. <laughs> Close enough. That'd be a great protector, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um I, I think it'd be cool if that's one thing I always like seeing in, in similar games like Pokemon and stuff. I love when they give you like a weird typing combo. Like that's kind mm -hmm. of what I like about Mutanus is right now he's really the only fighter that's goal is to kind of be a taunt almost be a protector and i mm -hmm. love kind of like role reversals like that i think it'd be cool if we saw maybe more casters that actually like physically attacked that could be kind of interesting mm -hmm. um it's just neat kind of seeing units do things that are kind of atypical that you wouldn't really expect from from their typing um but moving on to the next bit we have here. So uh, Mullahu actually drew up a pretty cool matchup chart on his stream so today. And mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about that. Pull it up, everybody. <laughs> It'll be linked uh, somewhere. Yes. It'll yeah. be linked yeah. somewhere. Uh, let's in say the in the description. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. See? We're getting, we're getting the hang of Great it. Minds. This, I'm so... I'm so excited, and I have to say, I I do have a day job, so I could not camp Molohu's stream okay, because he okay. told me he was planning to do this, and I I got so hyped because I've been trying to do it kind of on my own with with my own um, stats that I have. Um, I talk a lot uh, on stream a couple weeks ago about taking notes and why that's a good thing, and so being able to look back through uh, about a week worth of games was awesome, but this. He's incredible. Um, walk us through it, Malahu. Don't let me steal your thunder. Yeah. So once once you pull up the the uh, the Google sheet here, it's mm -hmm. basically the, the sh shout outs to the people who gave us some uh, some help and support in terms of like formatting it a little bit better, changing the color blindness thing off. We had it in like the bright like pink and green and red before, so now it should be a little bit easier to see. But um, no, I mean the disclaimers about this chart are basically that a yeah we did it live on stream. We had a lot of chat helping out. And so it was kind of a like a grassroots crowdfunded um, sheet uh, in the notes. Again, this is a very qualitative matchup chart, right? Like it, it, we can't just go look at Hearthstone replay and pull up all the matchups and see what it looks like and kind of get like a pretty clear idea. These things are all over the place. The matchups are so skill dependent. They're so crazy. And if anything, what I really think this did was dispel any type of notion that there is a rock, paper, scissors meta truly that is just like polarized matchup, you can't win, go next. It's clearly not the case because there is a lot of gray on this chart. And so the blue uh, the blue cells are favored matchups. And again, you, lead, you read it from left to right. So all the decks are down the, the x-axis there. Shadow Samuro, Nature Samuro. Uh, Beasts, OG Nature, Double Fighter, which is kind of basically just a stand-in for whether it's Sour Fang Tavish or Rakara Sour Fang or Samuro Voon. I get that there were kind of like a lot of these double fighter comps that popped up in theory to respond to a lot of the double blue decks. Um, and then some of the new decks, which are this Frost Illidan, Frost Eudora, and Frost Cornelius are kind of all in there. That's with the Cornelius plus XY. That's basically the like Jaina Varden plus something. Mm -hmm. right and they're split up into a, a various like those are probably the most divided that are technically the most similar 
Um, but their matchup spreads are different and we tested some of them today, but it, they're still really, really new decks. So for most of what we were doing today, we would like be talking about it in chat or on stream. And it was like, all right, has en does anyone know this deck? And it was just like, no, we had to literally like wait for someone to come into chat and be like, oh yeah, by the way, I watched Sid's stream from last night for all night. And so I can tell you what happened. Or I watched Team America jamming for whatever. Like it, it was actually pretty hard to get numbers on this. So it's not based on any hard numbers. It's not based on any hard science. It's kind of just fleshing it out, feeling it out. But at the end of the day, I think we get pretty close. I think a lot of these, you're hard pressed to be like, wow, this is horribly wrong. People definitely have their strong opinions about a lot of these things. But um, for the most part, I stand by a lot of what's here. But so ultimately, yeah, it's just you read it from left to right. The mirror matches are all 50-50s and the grays that kind of go down the, the diagonal there. But it's basically got the eight or so decks that I would say you see on ladder with regularity. Anything else is on its way up, being discovered, or has already fallen off for the most part. Yeah, this and this is great, and I love how you set it up. And to your point about, you know, it's very clearly not a rock, paper, scissors meta. I see a lot of chatter uh, last week, especially about how, oh, you get above 8K and it's all, um, you know, Nature Sam beats Shadow Sam, Shadow Sam beats uh, Frost Eudora, Frost Eudora beats Nature Sam. The rock, paper, scissors, Merc's meta, GG. Mm -hmm. it, I could not disagree more. <laughs> and you know, running some of the janky things I have above, uh, you know, 8K is there are things that you can scam out that, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. that mm -hmm. I have beaten Nature Samuro, uh with with Shadow Samuro many times, not off, like not the majority of times, but it's there, right? The 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 potential to outplay opponents is here for all of these and so that is kind of the asterisk over it for me um but initial thoughts yeah rexar beasts versus <laughs> um guff nature i i i would say that's favored you have for, it listed as unfavored i would have i would say it's favored um maybe i i could be convinced 50 50 and maybe cookie makes a difference in breakpoints. but when i was playing this uh because i this is all i played weeks one and two beasts, um, yeah. beasts just smashes anything that leads more than one blue right and the fact that shadow sam actually <clears throat> does beat it from time to time is proof that like okay that was that was the wrong mindset but it took me forever to, to roll off beasts until until Shadow Sam showed up. But I would still argue with you that OG nature gets trounced by beasts. Yeah, I mean, I think part of the like is I, I was I was on the other side and playing a lot of nature back in the day. And yeah, I think mm -hmm. Cookie changes a lot of weird stuff now. A lot of the old yep. uh, beast decks weren't they were playing like the shadow stuff on the bench instead. That was kind of bog standard for a while. Now it's kind right. of again, there are more stuff. There's more nature stuff on the back line of beasts. But in my experience, a lot of times the nature, the pure nature matchup ends up going with basically a setup where your turn your Malfurion is always alive. You get mm -hmm. a really nutty root on King Crush on turn two. And then things start to fall apart. And Cookie really helps, I think, that matchup a lot because Beasts never really gets away with being able to summon very much. And a lot of times they kind of have to. And then Cookie snipes on a little, a couple of summons just ends up being a really big blowout. Rexar, you get to muddy footing on turn one to mess up a lot of the uh, mm -hmm. King Crush math. So their, King, their kill command goes wild. But uh, no, honestly, the, the Beasts, it's funny to see Beasts on this matchup chart here because... In my experience, it's a matchup that we, I haven't seen in a long time. People kind of, it was a super popular deck in day in weeks one and two. Honestly, more like week two. Like week one, people Definitely. didn't really know that Rexar's like Mama Bear Claws was actually like nice. And so it, it just took people a while to level up like their Mukla and their Rexar and their Crush. Mm -hmm. So, um, but so maybe things have changed. And at, <laughs> I'm sure you could, you could probably make an argument for almost everything on this uh on this chart, but and I yeah, plan that's to, another sir. disbended one. I plan <laughs> deal, <to. laughs> deal, deal. Yeah, so uh, things maybe Cookie made a big difference when I was playing with a lot of the Guff uh, Nature stuff. I was playing for a little bit with Cookie, and it seemed to help a lot. The break points from the Cookie help mm -hmm. helped a lot, and Malfurion just seems to live forever in that matchup. So, but I'm willing to have it be contested. Yeah, um, with uh, with Beast, I, I was playing a lot of Beast in the beginning, and I I think in general. Um, 
they'd probably be like ever so slightly favored, I think, against uh, at least like guff nature with like that double cast mm-hmm. opening. But I don't think it's as heavily favored as it was like a week or two. Oh, ago. definitely not. Like it's it's <laughs> changed a lot. Like people kind of know how to play against it now. And like you said, the cookie breakpoints kind of change things. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't played enough with it to like know the exact math on them, but I do know uh, right around a week, week and a half ago, when Nature Samuro started taking off, you could really feel the environment was getting very hostile towards beasts because you could just shut it down really quickly with Brutcon, kind of mess up their whole first mm-hmm. turn, root them second turn, and then your King Crush just isn't really doing anything. Um, yep. and you know when your your whole start is trying to leverage the power of crush then that's not really so good um so i think th- it's definitely like a strong comp that i think is just getting a little bit like hated out of the meta like it did used to have those shadow back lines too which i think are still good but i think now that cookie got kind of thrown into play people are really considering different back lines because cookie's just insanely powerful so and then when you change one back line maybe you want to change up your other ones as well depends on the comp but i think i think beast is one of those ones where um there's still a lot of power there but it needs a little bit of a different meta to really like see that power again absolutely um the other interesting thing as i'm looking at this chart is um so what Mullahu did is uh, on the far right, there is basically a, a column that is, okay, how many uh, favored oh, matchups yeah. does this um, uh, does this comp have? And Mullahu, stop me if I'm not reading that title correctly. <laughs> um, but interestingly, there are only two uh comps that are favored versus five of these nine, and really five of eight because you're never going to be favored versus yourself Mm -hmm. um it's nature samuro which i think anyone would have guessed and then the cornelius comps Mm -hmm. which i have to believe is mostly cornelius frost and cornelius holy Mm -hmm. are the ones you were mainly thinking of is that right malahu yeah cornelius xy is kind of like cornelius double blue maybe that's Mm -hmm. like an easier way to think of it too but yeah that's again kind of loosely under this umbrella because i didn't want to have like cornelius with velen and anuin cornelius with yeah eudora and blah 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 but right um or jana and varden or whatever but yeah that, that's kind of theoretically it's this comp that is a a cornelius and then no matter what like double scaling blue guy that is right. going to either be effectively Ooh. trying to be a control deck that goes above all the other mid-range decks has this taunt reliable taunt. that's why they're all kind of down there but yeah that is uh cornelius with either van du- Velen and anduin or with jana and varden for the most part or perhaps tamson Vulgin hmm, when i get on ladder Mm -hmm. i see and i think this is interesting because the reason cornelius hasn't totally taken off is pretty obvious when you look right at this chart you are bright red against shadow sam and nature sam cornelius just doesn't do enough into samuro decks is that what you saw so that this is the cornelius line is the most hotly contested one i think probably the most people kind of had commentary about it saying that we were like super wrong about some things and again this is definitely one where I think verdict is still out because I was sure. I was being told I haven't played with the Cornelius stuff yet, but we had a lot of people that were hanging out and saying various things that they'd either played it, played against it, etc. But I was really surprised to hear that apparently, yeah, that Cornelius isn't that great against Samuro, which seems completely unhinged, right? I think part of the reasoning is that you basically just whether it's Jaina and Varden or it's Velen and Anduin, you still just can't really pressure their the samuros enough from the samuro decks and mm-hmm. you can still kill cornelius fast enough yeah a lot of the times you don't even have to do like aoe damage so like cornelius's heal is really weird where turn one if you need to taunt if you turn one you just try to taunt with cornelius you heal nothing because it's a two speed and you haven't taken any damage yet so now all of a sudden it's just two mana taunt do nothing and then on turn two if it wasn't like Natalie with Splinter going for Anathema or whatever, like there's just a lot of times you just full send at Cornelius and he looks kind of weird and he looks kind of bad. And I think that's what people were talking about is that, oh, it actually turns out that Cornelius just isn't good enough against Samara, which blows my mind. But yeah, at the moment, I'm willing to believe it. I haven't, again, tested a ton of it, but that is the super asterisk that would come with this Cornelius line that, hey, look, technically, according to this matchup chart, if you add them up, 
it looks like there are five favorable matchups. But like we've been saying, if Samuro is 80% of the meta, it doesn't matter if you have nine winnable matchups and one unlosable or one unwinnable matchup. Because if you fight that one unwinnable matchup nine times out of 10, your deck is just bad. So or not yeah. bad, but it's just going to lose. So right. a super duper weird column to interpret for sure. So I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah, definitely yeah. agree with that. It's it's uh, Cornel- It's kind of interesting, and I think it's I think this is in part to uh, to do with like Corn- like I'm sure a lot of people just leveled Cornelius up, and it's still kind of being determined mm-hmm. uh, the best way to play him. Like I've, I've heard different arguments from all different ki- types of stuff in terms of like, hey, do you actually want to taunt like right away turn one? Is that actually some? I've seen arguments saying that taunting on turn one is actually wrong i so it's it's kind of it's interesting like um because he's such a new character in the meta from those recent buffs i think it is going to take a little while longer before we have like a definitive kind of idea of if it's favored or not favored because it's kind of one of the newer decks in the meta whereas like shadow samuro has been around for quite a while and even nature samuro even though it's not like an old deck but it, it's been around for at least like you know week and a half two weeks or something now so like it's it's in and it's been played so much it's kind of established like people know to expect it right and, and they're also getting used to the opening lines which is mm-hmm. why i found it really interesting because i got to watch this evolve over about two days yesterday and today where um i get used to cornelius taunts on one every time so instead of swinging at jaina or velen i'm just going to full send at cornelius and then all of a sudden this morning i started to see a couple people swinging on one instead of taunting which baited the crap out of me because i had already full sent and now as i got into the afternoon it really went back and forth and i thought it was fascinating to watch that as the the nature samuro player uh kind of improve but from the nature samuro and to a lesser extent the shadow samuro point of view i have to say i am way more scared of uh, the frost lead because jaina will not die if you cannot kill her turn one and again this is for i'm sure there are tons of listeners who can tell me how to play this matchup better but if i'm running a samuro lead and i cannot pop ice block on turn one she's probably not going down till at least turn five or six when diablo finally hits the board (laughs) and with cornelius out there and i can't get to her and i can't pop her jaina will always take two turns to kill and so it's really interesting seeing how crazy scaling she can get just pumping it every turn and by the you know time i had no mercs left on my bench their varden is hitting me for like 24 damage per flurry it's ridiculous right so i think as this develops and we start to be able to uh, remove the xy into frost into holy into i don't know shadow right i think we'll get a better idea of of what is good with what which double blues we actually want to see with him. Yeah, lately I've been more impressed with Jaina. Just they they kind of technically soft buffed them in one of the bug fix patches where Varden's death rattle wasn't getting affected by the yeah. frost damage bonus from Jaina. So I on weirdly, oh, wow. I think that I that was in the yeah, that was in a patch. And I think people yeah. read that and then were like, oh, let's just try it again. And it was yeah. it was good before. And it got better and people just like tried playing it. Cause honestly, like the Varden, the Varden Jaina stuff mostly came up with the, the, the tab, like Tavish Varden Jaina, which is like the really common way that you would see, uh, the two frost folk together. And that deck was kind of a, a deck from yesteryear to a certain extent. That was kind of like right at the beginning, it popped up as like a really nutty mid rangey deck, right? Team America, like probably most famously played just an absolute shit ton of it. Um, and the Invitational, we had a lot of people bringing it and doing pretty well with like Surrender from the APAC team was kind of like really good at playing it. And so they still played it and it was just like a fun skill intensive deck. But I think honestly, people just like tried it again. And yeah, Jaina's really good. So yeah. Varden, I got cold snapped a million times today. Like we were play testing because we didn't know how Mam was into the Illidan Frost comp. And I was like, does anyone have this? Let's just... Let's just solve this. Let's answer this right now, right? I'll play Ma'am. You can play Varden. Uh, you play Frost Illidan. 
right? So not Eudora and not Cornelius, probably the quote unquote worst mm -hmm. of the the Jaina Varden decks. Honestly, in my mind, like Illidan really was not that impressive in that deck. You could, if anything, you would just like leave him up and it would just be a punishing position for them instead. But um, so jam that for a little bit. And yeah, Jaina was still just really good. But ma'am, at the end of all the games, we decided to kind of put it as ma'am favored against the, the Illidan version. But I think Eudora could could fix that. But uh, yeah, no. So I, I'm still a big fan of Jaina. Ice block, as always, in every single game, taking other turns, stopping your opponents is going to be good. Yeah, she's uh, she's real strong. I mean, I remember, I think the first comp I really started playing a lot, started climbing a lot with was actually Jaina Varden. And this was back when everyone was still running the Lich King. Who that's, oh, mm -hmm. that's another yeah. character mm -hmm. that's kind of fell off recently in the last two, two and a half weeks, three weeks or so. But he's still a really powerful character. I think it's just the the meta that we're seeing right now. It doesn't enable him to be at like the height of how powerful he can be and leveraging his abilities like to their fullest potential. But I do think he's definitely one we want to keep an eye on for maybe when some new mercs get added. Because all it takes is one good synergy or one good supporting merc that can really make a character like that that used to see play and isn't a bad character just having i mean have have y'all seen a lich king on the ladder in the last like two weeks <laughs> i I, don't think, I have oh you have? actually that's exciting which like it's it's so funny that that you say that because i have uh, he's definitely died down right mm. since we're not seeing a full frost lead anymore but uh, i am of the opinion that the best way to stop nature samuro is lich king really because the best way to stop nature samuro is to make sure they cannot go first which is why you see shadow sam doing you know pretty good into them mm -hmm. uh varden comps typically end up doing very well in my experience into nature and it's because you're either denying malf his speed control or taking it away altogether and when you get lich king just stacking those slows like even if i survive everybody until like turn three i'm looking at like a 12 speed lightning bolt or something absurd and that's i'm not going to be able to do anything because those mercs are very squishy and if they yeah. don't get to act first or in between where they can start to get some healing in they fold pretty quick so definitely not seeing as much a little disappointed i kind of wish i had seen more because i think that would help the rise of nature samuro and tamper that down a little bit interesting that's that's really cool because yeah like i haven't i haven't ran into a lich king in a while which is a shame because i i love the character and i think the the build mm -hmm. of him in mercenaries is really cool um mm -hmm. having that kind of unique uh perma slow ability and having it affect neighbors and stuff it's one of those abilities kind of like eudora where it makes positioning matter a lot more and i think as we see more abilities like that get implemented into the game it's going to just add a lot more decision making and uh, a lot less like straightforward lines of play i think that's part of the one of the other reasons uh shadow samaro and nature samaro have kind of taken off the the two big things being one they're relatively budget friendly compared to some other comps and then two the they're they're relatively straightforward to play like yes you can end up in situations that are can be confusing and where one line might not be like super clearly better than the other but i think they're compared to some other decisions you have to make especially when it comes to like the complexity of positioning kind of stuff uh shadow tomorrow's a lot a little bit more just like straightforward this is what i'm doing and it's a little bit easier to kind of like navigate against different comps even if you don't really know what the comp is if it's something like janky that you're not used to seeing yeah and i think that to your previous point is why beasts did so well early on because really with beasts your first two turns are more or less scripted mm -hmm. uh and i would argue that's probably the only deck i've played that that fits that mold you know depending on the matchup a lot of turn ones end up being a little bit scripted especially with something like nature samuro versus shadow samuro where everyone's played that matchup a thousand times and you just have to go to the the best case scenario where turn two immediately you have things to think about it has okay. never looked the same at least at least for me um and i think that is appealing to folks that are getting into the mode and so getting used to 
something like beasts where i see the blue thing i kill the blue thing <laughs> easy enough yeah it's it's true I'm, I'm definitely not knocking that uh like i think that's one benefit especially if you're like new to the mode and you're trying to learn it it's nice to have like plays where it's it's not super like i'm not it's not super like complicated like between what you have which decision is better and you can kind of just like learn as you play and it the game kind of explains itself um which is good it's it's kind of good for getting people into the mode and into the that point where maybe they want to explore other comps and stuff and see what else is going on in the meta and kind of figure that like well this counters this this counters this but as we said before you know right now despite what some people might think or say uh, i would not say the the mercenaries meta is is a uh, rock paper scissor like hard solve state at all i don't know i mean and i think all your points are super salient and definitely eudora is kind of weirdly the i, I see this full circle with beasts kind of into eudora now where you we see this very interesting mm -hmm. progression where just like you said beast was really good right off the bat play patterns were not very well established yet people didn't know to muddy footing the rex to mm -hmm. stop the kill command so that the king crush would kill it in the right way like right like all those play patterns right. started to figure out but beasts was relatively scripted as time went on people started figuring things out beasts could not like you said couldn't react to it they had no options that if you could figure out how to stop them you stopped them and then that was it you can lean on the bench you can change things up and maybe that helps like we said nature bench maybe that's good enough but uh, the inflexibility was, I think, probably one of its biggest downfalls. And we see more or less kind of reflected in the matchup chart that it just isn't really that good anymore. The inflexibility, like I said, probably it's death knell. Eudora on the complete other side of things, the newest deck, not the oldest deck anymore, and where positioning matters, where your plays are super weird all the time. And it's prop. I would argue that Eudora is maybe one of the most skill intensive mercs in the game right now, mm -hmm. which is just completely opposite Easily. from beasts, right? Yep. So people are just barely scratching the surface in terms of how to play against Eudora. Like I said, I played against, I went against one recently with Edwin and that already started to mix a million things up. But just when Eudora moves around and it moves around correctly, it looks so clean and there were just multiple times where I played against pirates that every other pirates opponent before that, it just was a complete disaster. And then when you play against it and it's good, you're, I was literally just like, whoa, that was, that was a dance. Eudora, yeah. I mean, they just knew what they were doing and I just couldn't think about that stuff. I, I can't, I can't be bothered to mess around with like where the cannon is going to go. I already messed up laying down my opener because I didn't know there was going to be Eudora. <laughs> like th those kind of things make this game eternally crazy and just eternally wild. So I, I am so in favor of more Eudoras rather than more beasts. I think it's great that there are these kind of more or less scripted-ish openers that are good fine but i think people will have to at the end of the day come to accept that this game is super hard and you should just pick a comp that you like that has flexibility and learn it you get rewarded for learning it your deck will be good again you just keep it updated and you'll be fine exactly and there's so many things you can do with most of these decks and and that is the problem with beasts because i i promise you listeners i played every single variation that possibly makes sense of the beast comp i tried leading blink fox i had lady anaconda in there and nice. honestly that last one was the closest to actually working but there just isn't a way to get the same impact on the board as as a straight beast opener and that inflexibility has been it's it's of its death toll um but i'm totally with you mola who more eudora less beasts not that beasts shouldn't exist i think beasts is great because it is going to be uh, a jank check right it's kind of mm -hmm. like how when you have zoo or face hunter as a tier two deck there is only like you have you must be this good to play in the meta otherwise you're not gonna you know make an impact yeah. and, and if you can step one is do the gear check. Does it beat beasts? Okay, then we keep moving. Now what else we do we look at? Where are the other matchups? What are we target, right? And suddenly you're allowed into the meta. But if you can't beat beasts, everything else is probably going to do work against you. And you're going to auto lose that because, again, scripted first two turns means there's not a lot of counterplay for you either. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting, though, because I think now that we are seeing more eudora coming into the meta 
think maybe maybe not a huge return but i think we could see a little bit more return of beasts if for no other reason than it's just so easy for crush to just knock down those cannons mm -hmm. and in a lot of the the beast comps or not the beast the uh frost comps that we're seeing they do have that double caster lead in bard and jaina mm -hmm. and then whatever third they want to put on there so it definitely i think if that becomes more popular we can definitely see beasts kind of come back to kind of take advantage of that matchup um because i i mean i remember when i was experimenting with eudora like shortly after she released and that was when beasts were still kind of more popular and mm -hmm. I remember that was one of the big things that was just giving me so much trouble because she'd spawn a cannon and it was just food for the crush. Mm -hmm. And then it's yep. like, do I want to spawn another cannon? It's just going to get eaten again. And then Mukla is kind of screwing up her uh, ability because I do, well, I don't know, I think I misread the card when I first uh, looked at Eudora. For some reason, I thought she had or maybe the art threw me off because she has like that that cannon gun i thought she ha was gonna have like a ranged attack to kind of go with the cannons <laughs> and but mm -hmm. no she has to connect in so she's oh, taking yeah. mm -hmm. damage back and then if you don't hit one of if you don't hit the left or the right then you're not getting that cannon shot off and that cannon shot is like more than half of your damage so oh, it, yeah. it's it's and then you have to deal with positioning like we talked about and so it's just um, really like Eudora. Glad she's seeing more play. But I do think if we continue to see her becoming a more popular force, we might like see at least a little bit more uh, or a little bit like less hostile presence towards beasts than we're seeing with a lot of Shadow Sam and Nature Sam running around. Well, well then in that case, I will leave uh, our listeners with where I left off my beast testing, which was um, Cut Rexar. Don't overvalue the the bit of stats he adds. Bring in Lady Anacondra for a little bit more uh, longevity. Run her damage on her S1, so uh, you're not actually dropping any damage. Crush and Rexar can do 80 damage to a caster turn one, so can Crush and Anacondra. Mm -hmm. And she speed ties nature. That, and then on the bench, you've got Malph, you've got Brucon, you've got Cookie. So that's where I left off somebody if you make something out of that it's yours take it and run absolutely get these cannons out of my face and i will uh reward you <laughs> <laughs> that's great i like it anaconda is a sweet one i, I anaconda was on everybody's mind right as soon as that was another like pre-release mm -hmm. merc that everyone was just like anaconda is just the best merc in the game she's just 40 damage to blues like how does this ever lose and I, again kind of another merc that people just forgot about and stopped playing um mm -hmm. maybe it has still has some some spots again i never even really got around i started to level up my tasks on her to try to do the like nightmare viper cheese where you could have the like you just made a gigantic viper and that was maybe just good enough um mm -hmm. maybe that's still fine maybe maybe there are still some spots again brucon is kind of all over the place right now anaconda's pretty good at killing brucon oh, yeah. but i don't know anaconda we could we could come back She's got a lot yeah. of, honestly, a lot of interesting abilities on her kit. The mend, the healing that she can get is actually like a lot, a lot, a lot. So healing is definitely getting a way more attention now as the meta has moved on. That was something that everyone just could not figure out to save their lives in the beginning of the game. It was just like, uh, I can't calculate this in a sim, so let's just pretend it doesn't exist. And then it became right. very popular and very important. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And now I think we might see again, as healing is still a very popular force in the meta right now, I think we might see the rise of anti-healing with Tamsin kind of making her way back to some shadow comps. Um, like I Did know... someone call for a spicy Tamsin deck? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Tank Tankster had the Tankster had the the Tamsin deck that I I kept talking about when we were casting that at the ATK. I, I, I was loved... like, Phew, Tamsin yeah, is sweet. sweet. Was really I loved sweet. playing her. I and I it was so much fun because I had been running. I was I was standing so hard for Nat um, because with the S one being able to snipe Karen from forty was huge. Um, and then Anduin started started to come up and and Tamsin. Oh, God, there's there was nothing more fun uh, than just kind of ruining some some lives mm -hmm. of some some early holy comp testers. And I'm oh, so yeah. sorry if I ran into you <laughs> because uh, I had an insane win rate that day. And so, yeah, I, again, bringing it to the tournament was so much fun. Um, but I'm not going to get down that rabbit hole uh, right now. 
I will happily talk your ear off on Twitter if anyone wants to to hear more about my Tamsin experiments. Yeah, that was that was really cool to see. I loved I loved watching that series. Like, because when it was being played, that was kind of right about the time when I think the Anduin comps were just kind of making their way to like popularity, and we were seeing a bunch mm-hmm. of like high ladder places with them. So they were kind of all over the place. So it was a really great call to just kind of be like, hey what counters all this healing you know and the whole thing with anduin is he just scales up from healing his other units and then you can't do anything to him and so if you can just shut that healing down on one of their key turns or trying to get off that holy nova or like double healing it just completely shuts down their whole comp and there's not really much they can do to stop you doing that the the biggest thing that there was to stop the tamps like the biggest tamson outplays that I kept running into at least because I well, we did see it a little bit uh, after uh, Tankster was playing in the tournament. But honestly, the biggest thing is just like you could kind of you got into yet again another mind game of like mm-hmm. they can Veil of Shadows you. So do you just not Holy Nova this turn? Yeah. And so you just Penance right. instead and now they blow their Veil of Shadows. Then you Holy Nova the next turn. Can yeah. you get away with doing that? If you can, then that's kind of the counterplay potentially. But yeah. um, then technically, once people start, like you said, like people started changing the way that they play even like within the day these play patterns are just going to get updated all the time and then you start out leveling each other and it just becomes like a weird little like degenerate uh ladder of logic to see who can get ahead of the other person you'll coin flip wrong once on ladder area it'll feel bad you'll lose and there won't be much to do about it but i do think that tamson is really sweet i love the death rattle that merc in general has always really impressed me where can you play her hard to tell um maybe there's some cooler like if samuro can actually get kind of chopped down i really like tamson as an opener but at the moment can't really play her as an opener instead of natalie maybe people go back to playing like super duper duper just everything shadow the tamson uh lich king decks were kind of cool so oh, we were yeah. talking about lich king earlier people haven't really messed around with lich king plus cookie yet that really? extra nine now all of a sudden Tam- lich king is at like 95 or something yeah, like that something a lot so yeah. uh could be could be well, some room to improve still. Well, uh, in that case, I'm just you know we talked a lot about Cornelius, and that that is a pretty good looking matchup spread. And then we've got Tamson, who can scale Shadow. Suddenly, Vulgin, Tamson, Cornelius, not looking so absurd to me. <laughs> and uh, I'm writing that one down. Yeah. I'm back already. Here we go. Got the Natalie on the bench, Lich King on the bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that could be Ooh, really yeah, that on the bench. Be- That'd be Sylvanas on the bench because, yeah. and which I always forget, which has been one of my favorite things to to play with this week. Also, is the the Sylvanas Vulgin uh, synergy, uh, the speeding up the the mm-hmm. attack buff. Not super impactful, but cranking off that attack buff at one speed oh, yeah. into a caster for like eighty days de- is pretty big. <laughs> it's pretty big. Mwah. It's, I wonder it's if you just take Mornblade at that point and just like not even worry about going for the the reclaimed souls, and you just like jam she just has 15 attack or whatever and you're just like sure this is good enough um just like one speed just 30 you that might be better i I know luna love back in like halfway through the second week of mercs they were cranking on actually no i think it was the first week it was like the end of the first week because no one very few people had actually rushed to vulgin's Mm -hmm. task seven Mm -hmm. and i remember luna was like one of the ones where she was up there had task seven right away on Vulgin, but was kind of just like just silently dominating people with it and it was just like yeah this is insane this is super good but just people hadn't really caught up yet but they were playing they were messing around with a uh with sylvanas instead of samuro which then essentially got replaced by samuro and then you had shadow samuro which is just one of the best decks in the format but sylvanas with morn blade just shooting at one speed on turn one there's a lot of damage to a caster that's yeah. actually pretty fine. You just say, I'm not even going to try to scale her. Because that was something that came up in the tournaments that we played, mm-hmm. is that I was always really under-impressed with Sylvanas coming from the bench. Because yeah. mm-hmm. you didn't, people weren't getting cute and combining it with the Sash of Illusion on Samuro yet. You were getting, like, plus 15, or you had to, like, really greed for it and play, like, a janky deck with a ton of summons. And all of a sudden, that deck just wasn't good anymore. So I was starting to get unimpressed with Sylvanas on the bench. Started liking it as an opener, but then once we figured out some mam stuff now that's probably still my favorite sylvana spot um still feels really good finally got all of her abilities up to rank five for me but nice. um yeah shadow might get all a right. hookup in this next set we'll see That'd be yeah really deal cool. uh you have just convinced me i'm going to do a uh, vulgin sylvanas cornelius lead after this uh after this Ooh. recording that sounds good. Oh, deal. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, with Morn Blade, it's going to be great. If I do anything interesting, uh, Twitter, you'll hear Let about it. Let us know. Yeah. Let us know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that that sounds real exciting. Um, speaking of exciting things, um, I think that's going to put a wrap on our little meta discussion here. Um, but this chart is really awesome. Um, we'll have a link for it provided in the description if you want to take a look at it yourself and would love to hear uh, what your experiences are with any of these matchups. Get a little, little more of that that data from the community to help uh, kind of make it a little bit more accurate and stuff like that. Um, but so speaking about exciting stuff here, uh, last short little topic we're going to do here is about the upcoming expansion. Um, so we're only about two weeks out now. And like we've said a bunch of times before, we're kind of expecting some new mercs to be added here. And so I thought that it would be kind of cool to ask if there are any characters that we are kind of excited or kind of hoping come with the presumed update with the expansion release. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to start this one off with I'm really hoping we get uh, Valera. I know she was, uh, yep. I think, like data mined or leaked or whatever some time ago. And then I think recently, in the most recent patch, it was kind of found that I think some art for her and Vanessa Van Cleef were put in. Now, no idea if those are going to be used in the the upcoming set or not, but um, we definitely do have a lot more information on Valera, so I'm really hoping. And I think um, one of the devs in the Discord did mention she's coming soon, TM. Um, So hopefully uh, we see her soon, because... She has, if I recall correctly, some really cool abilities, and she's just one of my favorite characters in uh, the Hearthstone universe, so I hope we get her in Mercs real soon. I have I have two. We were actually talking about this for a brief hot second uh, today, again, on stream before the matchup chart, and the two that came to mind, which are both sweet, I think, um, are... Number one, we were talking about how, can we ever get so honestly, what are the best the one of the first places you're gonna look for? Like what are the tribes that are kind of like under supported? And I think one of the cool ones that's under supported, especially if they do fix Blink Fox, and we were talking about Taronda for a little bit, Millhouse could always make a comeback, is basically we need another arcane guy. And we were talking about who could be a sweet arcane guy, especially a protector arcane guy. Because right now we have some casters, we have some okay. fighters, but who would be a protector arcane guy? And we came up with a really sick answer, which is actually the curator Ooh, from like Karazan. That. That's that can a be great one. A big Very arcane good. golem guy. And then yeah. you can have some menagerie stuff thrown in there and they just have one Sweet arcane ability. Yeah. Could Hold be on, wait. really sweet. That's cool. Are you are you suggesting we not only get an arcane protector, but also potentially with beasts synergy? You are just writing my Christmas list for <laughs> me, sir. And Blink Fox is a beast. It goes straight I into the arcane. Oh, mm-hmm. that's too clean. So that's number oh, one. I think it'd be a sweet one. Because honestly, when I when I keep thinking of Mercs to add, I always jump to like, all right, there's it's normally like a color. Mm-hmm. There's a color that re- is lacking in a various mm-hmm. comp. And so another one's like a shadow. Yeah. Um, or sorry, another like caster that can go into the orc comp that doesn't have to just be like Gul'dan. But I've run up right. against a lot of Gul'dans lately, by the way. There's been some goofy like orc with Grom, or sorry, with Garrosh, Gul'dan, yep. Cookie on the bench. That deck has been nice. The yeah. Rakara Thrall Sourfang has been the opener. It's been the numbers on that comp just get so ludicrous so Insane. quickly. I've never seen so many like 30 and multiple 30 and 40 and 50 attack mercs before at, alive at the same time. It's pretty impressive. So maybe Gul'dan still has a spot, but uh, yeah, red protect, red arcane protector. I've got the curator and then the other kind of secondary one that we were talking about. It would be pretty cool, I think, to see some kind of response to the speed up, slow down, just the speed manipulation of the meta. How mm-hmm. do you how do you deal with that? You either print more of them, so everyone has them, right? So Valera, maybe we give another fighter. They can have a speed buff. You just have like six different speed manipulations. Pick which one you want. Or what if we had a cleanse that was more yeah. readily accessible? So imagine a shaman type character mm-hmm. that has a totem that battle cry like mass dispels or pulses a dispel on just your team or another totem that pulses a dispel on the opponent's team. You wipe mm-hmm. away cookie buffs. You wipe away bonus nature damage. You wipe away bonus health from Garrosh. You wipe away who knows what. All kinds of weird things. But I think that would be a kind of a cool way to introduce a way to a tackle, <laughs> a tackle, to kind of tackle or attack the uh, a lot of the just debuffs that are happening right now because there oh, yeah. isn't really a way to deal with it sure. i know there are some pokemon precedents out there but uh i think that would be another cool one too also kind of increase the the design space for more summons i think would be sweet so those are my two uh suggestions 
those are good. I like those, and I, I love the idea. It it's making me uh, the the um, e fog. I think it's called in Pokemon yeah. Yeah. The, the cleanse. Um, the way you described it though made me think of uh, it, back in I played a, a mage in Burning Crusade, uh, the World of Warcraft expansion, and the the gruel fight. The one before him, you had to like, like uh, mage tanking spell or whatever. Steal. Yeah, you had to mage tank and you had to spell steal like a buff mm, so you could mm. eat yeah, uh, fireballs cool. from one of the bosses. I like that. Um, it, that's kind of what it made me think of. But I would have to say mine. I have one. Uh, I've got two. Uh, the first one we already talked about. Um, King Murgle Gurgle, I think, would be oh, a great I, mm-hmm. uh, Murloc protector. Mm-hmm. Um, and from a it, that tribe doesn't need a lot of help, but I just I've always loved the the Murloc kind of aesthetic mm-hmm. and play style. Most people don't, but every time a Murloc deck has popped up, I've played it on ladder. Um, the other one, I was going back and forth, but honestly, it was again playing ladder today. Uh, the Medivh portrait was um. uh, for for Mage is one of my favorites and arcane caster again yeah. if you want another arcane but i personally blizzard i know you're listening to this and are stealing mm. these ideas take mullahu's ideal about the arcane protector not mediv from me because he would clearly be a caster so um that's all i'll mm-hmm. say about that but i think those would be really cool additions mm. but i still if we're voting i vote for for mullahu's <laughs> yeah yeah i think some some great ideas there and uh hearing what you guys had to say actually made me think of one more i definitely want to mention we talked about dragons before uh i want to see more dragons really badly oh yeah um, mm-hmm. not just because i have like the the best alex Strauss skin now the the golden like human form one but oh yeah um, <laughs> i opened that one today hey we, congrats me Woo! too i just got hey. it um but the the whole thing i would like to see i i'm sure we're going to get the other dragon aspects in the game it's just there's no way we don't eventually with time um but something i would really like to see we talked before and just recently about like a cleanse or some kind of way to to mess with these kind of debuffs and speed manipulation abilities and i've been a fierce advocate for some kind of trick room like effect from pokemon that kind of reverses Ooh. speeds and now who would be more fitting to kind of flip mm. the speeds mm. of characters than someone like nas dormu who's kind of messing with yeah, time like and stuff yeah. like mm. and i just love nas dormu he's just a, a fun meme card and i'll fondly remember the like two seconds of fame he had where there was some kind of abusable way to uh to use him in the meta i don't remember when that was but there was something you could abuse with this timer a long time ago and i i look fondly back on that and i love using him in the the wild like uh death rattle dragons uh with the uh, the old g it's a gvg uh deathwing uh, deathwing uh no it was after that uh, it was after um, yeah not gvg it was a little bit later but yeah the the big yeah. deathwing that summons your uh your other dragons and it just mm-hmm. runs nice dormu and all the yeah, other no, big dragons uh, and shoots them into play on five ascent of dragons right yeah D-O-D. i think uh, maybe yeah. that was maybe that was it. it it was an older card though it was a lot older yeah card, but... I, I i do have good news for you though zombies mm-hmm. um the i don't know because you don't play a, a lot of ladder these days but I think it's like the third Thursday of every month. Uh, <laughs> Blizzard gives every que- everybody the same quest. It's oh, yeah. play three games with mm-hmm. Nosdamu, uh in I your deck. That. And I have to say, I would say of the, the games I play that day, probably about 50% of people wow. are running wow. it. That's so that's like, awesome. it does feel pretty cool because I will get a bunch of games where it's like, okay, we are playing on a 15 second timer. Let's do this, <laughs> Speed man. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely yeah. give it a go yeah i think it's the 15th actually yeah because for the 15 seconds that time, makes yeah. sense that's that right. makes sense yeah, i know it was recently mm-hmm. so that's why i was like yeah i don't know mm-hmm. yeah no i i've heard about that that's really cool i'll have to i'll have to try that out more because i love nas and i definitely hope we see him in mercenaries because there's a lot of potential for him and honestly all the the other uh dragon aspects just give us more dragons definitely. so dragons are good please mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all I, that's all i want for christmas <laughs> um, but speaking of holidays, uh, this episode is going to be airing right after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. Mm-hmm. So I thought to close it out, we could do a short little bit on something we're thankful for here. Um, and for me, that's definitely just uh, so far, knock on wood here. Uh, no technical issues this week. So that's awesome. 
Um, <laughs> very, very happy about that. The the response to the podcast has just been great. And hopefully this yeah, one yeah. will be a little bit better audio wise and everything like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, really happy about that. What about y'all? What do you want to think, sir? Oh, I, uh, I am very thankful for uh, my co-hosts. First of all, uh, just this, this really did come about organically for me. Um, it, you know, I, I was not a content creator uh, a month ago, uh, and now people keep telling me I'm one of that. Good, yeah. and, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm deeply grateful, not just for you both, but for the community at, at large, who everybody has been so welcoming, whether it's the, the Blizzard community advocates, whether it's, um, you know, the other content creators who... I I have gotten a deluge of advice on on how to use all these tools, how to <clears throat> adjust my audio levels, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and just everybody else, the community at large, the the folks who play this awesome game and participate in the tournaments and run the tournaments. I am deeply thankful for the whole mercenaries community. I was gonna say I'll complete the I'll complete the circle there. I know that uh. Blizzard uh, ABK has been in some hot water, but I'm I'm just gonna give the shout outs to the devs and to everybody that's worked on this game. Okay. I know they're they're on a, a well earned vacation right now. They've been getting wicked trolled, and just in terms of like timing up all kinds of things, you can tell the mercenaries has so much going on behind it. I truly think that they have struck gold with this mode. I am super excited for the future. I yet again will say that everybody, I suggest that the earlier, the better that you kind of start playing if you think there's any kind of interest in it. But uh, yeah, to hopefully some of the Blizzard people that are maybe listening to this again, we love you guys. Appreciate the work that you're doing. I hope that you guys just continue to do it as kind of as undisrupted as you can get away with. And I uh, hope you guys have a good vacation and a, ho a good uh, Thanksgiving or if anybody else, but uh, to you guys too and everybody listening. This is uh this has been this has been a blast and there's just gonna be more to come. Yeah. Um yeah. A lot of fun. Definitely, definitely looking forward to doing more of this. Um before we sign off here though, uh where can we find you guys here on the internet? Yeah, you can find me every Wednesday on uh Twitch TV slash uh, Tangster. Uh this week we're gonna be doing some some high level climbing with uh, a couple of nothing spicy, but just some new twists on some of the decks we talked about tonight. Nature Sam, Shadow Sam, and and keep a lookout for that uh what did I say? Uh Vulgin uh, Cornelius okay. Sylvanas. <laughs> you can also find me on Twitter at Tangster nineteen ninety two. Nice. Yeah, I'm in the same spots. Uh, we actually we actually did just change our schedule a little bit for streaming for us. So now we stream from uh, in the afternoon EST on Monday, Tuesday and Friday. So now we're not going to be there Wednesday and Thursday, which means now you can go watch Tankster on Wednesday, which is perfect. I, no, I think you start a little bit later, right? I think you start after me normally. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can get the the runner runner even so. There you go. There you um, go. But yeah, so twitch.tv slash Malhu. Um, still, I'm going to be updating before the 7th, hopefully, probably. I'm going to try to update the guides that you can find on esports.gg. So you can go there, find a lot of the Hearthstone stuff. Again, Rain from uh, Latam is killing it. Amy Chen just won a uh, another gaming industry award also working with us. Uh, nice. So esports is awesome. Check us out there. And then yeah, on Twitter, uh, Malhu TCV, I think on Twitter still. But uh, yeah, into the Discord and Twitter and Twitch. Um, but we'll see you guys soon. Awesome. Yeah. And of course, you can find me here on YouTube uh, where this podcast goes up every week. Um, Zombies Go Nom Nom on YouTube. And we now are on Spotify and yeah. Apple Podcasts, um, as well as have an RSS feed available. So if you want any of those, those are going to be linked below. Um, and I do occasional Twitch streams. Haven't really got that up off the ground a whole lot yet. Been kind of busy with working on the podcast, video stuff. stuff. And Pokemon is has been eating up way more than my time uh, <laughs> than it should have. But, you know, these things happen. <laughs> no harm, no foul there, though. But we will be back uh, for you with the Fighting Pit next week. But until then, um, signing off. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving and an enjoyable Black Friday. Catch you next time. Peace. Adios, everybody. Stay safe, all.